Hello, my friends. I am Pastor Zach Kingery. You know, every week when I go up and uh, and lead in worship and deliver a sermon, every week I pray a similar prayer during the Sunday worship service. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would be in our presence and convict us of what is righteous and true. That we would be convicted of righteousness and truth. Every week I pray that same prayer. You know, a lot of times when we think about church, or if we just ask someone on the street, you know, what do you think about church? They would bring up the idea that, well, it's a place where we're convicted of sin. A lot of people feel like, well, it's just a place where I am told how I am wrong. And church is a place where we should be convicted of sin. It, it is a place where uh, we need to see where our lives do not line up with, with God's desires. And Conviction of sin, that is when our eyes are open to the areas in our lives that do not line up with who God has created us to be. And so if our eyes are open to those things, then those are things that we need to work on to be changed, to be removed from our lives, or to be transformed by the power of Christ. But what also comes alongside of that is a convict conviction excuse me, of righteousness. In our lives. Not just a conviction of sin, the areas where we are wrong, but also a conviction of righteousness. Not only what we should be aspiring to, but the areas in our life that are correct. That's why I pray every week that God will convict us of what is righteous and true, so that we would not just be convicted of sin, but that we would also be convicted of or have our eyes opened to what God does want and desire for us, and our eyes opened to where our lives are in alignment with God's desires. That way we can be encouraged. Church services should be encouraging. Yes, there should be conviction of sin, but at an encouragement for holy and right living. Those are the areas that need to increase. There's a New Testament book. It's one of the one of the four gospels, which the gospels, there are it's uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's the same story of Jesus and his ministry told from four different perspectives. And so in the gospel according to John, we find in chapter 16, verses 8 and 9, and I encourage you to look it up in your Bible, but chapter 16, verses 8 and 9, this is Jesus speaking. He says, when the advocate arrives, he will convict us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now the advocate that is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, when the Advocate, when the Holy Spirit arrives, he will convict us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. The Holy Spirit will convict us of where in our lives we are living in rebellion to God. The Holy Spirit will convict us of where we are living in step with God. And will convict us and open our eyes to the truth that every person... Each and every person will someday stand before God and face his judgment. So when we come to church, yes, we need to be convicted of sin, but we also need to be convicted of or have our eyes opened to not only what is right and how we should be living, but the areas in our lives where we are living correctly so that we can be encouraged. You know, this past Sunday, I challenged each of you, you need to set aside time this week for spiritual self-examination, where you line up your life against what we find in Scripture, and we see where our lives do not line up with who God has called us to be. And if you haven't listened to that message, I encourage you, please go back and do so. I give you an example of spiritual self-examination, and, and I think that if you truly do it, your eyes will be opened to many amazing things. So if you haven't listened to it, I encourage you, please go do so. Every believer in Christ must take time to examine their thoughts, actions, and motivations to see where we do and where we do not line up with who God has called us to be, with who God has saved us to be through grace in Jesus Christ. I pray that this week your time of spiritual self-examination does not only open your eyes to sin in your life, but that you will be encouraged by seeing all of the ways you can and do give glory to God. 
that your eyes will be open to those times where you did live out love in your life. Those times where your life was filled with the fruits of the Spirit, like peace and patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. That you would be encouraged and know that God, through your faith in Jesus Christ, God has saved you to do many mighty good works. My friends, each day is an opportunity to love God and to share His truth in love with our family, our friends, and our neighbors. So may you let the light of Christ shine through you, because the world desperately needs it. Thank you for joining me this week for our Midweek Connection. May God bless you as you go in peace.